Hi, I'm Tom Deakin from the University of Bristol, and in this OpenMP booth talk at SC20, I'm going to be talking a little bit about performance portability of OpenMP on CPUs and GPUs. Now, the reason why performance portability is really important is if we look at the upcoming exascale systems that are going to be installed over the next 18 months, two years, something in that time frame, we can see this huge diversity in processor technology. We have CPUs from different vendors and GPUs from different vendors. Just looking at uh, to, in the United States, we have these machines, uh, Perlmutter, Frontier, Aurora, and El Capitan, all in the pre-exascale and, and exascale um, sizes. These are going to have CPUs from Intel and AMD, and GPUs from NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. In Japan, the Fugaku uh, supercomputer is based on these ARM-based processors from Fujitsu, the A64FX. So in order for us as, as code developers, we'd like to write our parallel programs. They're going to be targeting these, these primarily heterogeneous nodes that contain diverse um, processor technologies from lots of different vendors. And ideally, we'd only like to write our code uh, perhaps once and be able to port it between the different um, architectures and achieve similar levels of high performance efficiency between those different platforms. OpenMP is this shared memory parallel programming model um, that allows you to um, add these compiler directives to your programs that are written in C, C++ and Fortran. It's an open standard, it's, it's contributed to by lots of different vendors um, and they all help define what OpenMP the standard is. So it has these compiler directives that you annotate your code with and these um, help the compiler do some parallelism for you and um, tell it exactly how you'd like to parallelize your code. There are also API calls that you can use to, to query the runtime and things, um, but primarily you program with OpenMP using the compiler directives. Now OpenMP has been around since 1997, and in, in 2013 they introduced the target model in OpenMP 4.0. This allowed um, OpenMP to start targeting accelerated devices such as GPUs. Now there are really important refinements they released two years later in OpenMP 4.5 and that's the version of OpenMP that I'm going to primarily be talking about today. This has those mechanisms for both parallelism and data movement between the host and the target device, this, this GPU. So there's APIs and, and compiler directives in there that enable you to define how the parallelism should be mapped to the, to, um, the architectures that are, that are accelerated such as GPU and also how to move data from the host onto the device to, to be executed with and then back onto the host at the end. The data transfer is a, is a combination of these implicit rules where stuff automatically moves between the host and the device and back again, and also explicit controls that you have put in using these directives written by us as programmers. What this means is that OpenMP is one of the options that we have for, for programming both CPUs and GPUs using open standards in a performance portable way. And to show that, I'm going to use this code that I wrote called Babelstream. Babelstream is a, a benchmark based on Macalpinstream, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So Macalpinstream is this benchmark that is used to measure achievable main memory bandwidth. You have uh, three large arrays that will be resident in DRAM in, in main memory. If it's on a GPU, that would be high bandwidth memory typically. And it runs these simple vector kernels um, in order to um, measure the, the memory bandwidth, the sustained memory bandwidth that you can that you can achieve on that particular processor. Now Babelstream differentiates itself from Macalpinstream in some very important ways. Firstly, we allocate arrays on the heap. And secondly, and it's related, we, we only know the problem size at runtime. Now, Macalpinstream takes the problem size at compile time. This means the arrays are allocated on the stack and compilers are able to optimize the placement and alignment of memory um, to, to maybe best exploit some tricks that it knows inside the compiler. Now, many HPC codes do not have that luxury. We have to read the problem size in at runtime, and we also means we have to allocate our large arrays on the heap. This means that if we write a standard code, we wouldn't expect to achieve anywhere near the bandwidth of a stream benchmark, and, and these are some of the reasons why. So for Babelstream, we, we make sure we write it in a way that is um, following best practices for HPC. We allocate our arrays on the heap and we read the problem size in a runtime, but we still are able to achieve close to the peak performance uh, by, you know, by ensuring that the compiler knows as much information as it can and, and compilers are improving all the time. 
Importantly, and this is where OpenMP fits in, we, we support a wide range of programming models so that we can run on lots of different CPUs and GPUs from lots of different vendors. So most of the parallel programming models that you'll have come across, there is a ver version of Babelstream that exists. So there's, there's five kernels that we include in this benchmark, and, and the one I'm going to focus on today is Triad. This takes two vectors, it scales one of them by a scalar value, adds them together, and stores them in a third array. Now the code for that on a CPU using OpenMP might look like this. This is written in C, we have a simple for loop, and our three arrays that we have allocated elsewhere. We can see we just have our simple loop and we annotate the for loop with a compiler directive, this pragma OMP parallel for. This tells OpenMP to, to launch a number of threads according to the parallel directive. And then the for part of that, of that directive says to work share the iterations of that loop between all those different threads. So this is now a parallel loop that will run on a CPU. Now to make this run on a GPU, we have to add a little bit more. So I'm going to focus first of all on the parallelism, which is extending that parallel fork um, directive that we saw above our loop. Now you can see it reads pragma OMP target teams distribute parallel for SIMD. That's a bit of a mouthful, but really it's just saying use all the, the levels of the parallel hierarchy available within OpenMP and parallelize the loop across all of that hierarchy. So you're just telling the compiler, parallelize everything over here, and the degree to which it assigns bits of the iteration space to that hierarchy is still very much implementation defined, but we are just saying here is a complete parallel loop, go and parallelize it. Before and after the loop, we have to ensure our data moves from the host to the, to the device in order to run our parallel kernel, and then from the device back to the host at the end. And this is what these enter data and exit data directives are doing. All we're doing is, is adding these map clauses, which say the direction of the, of the data transfer. So it's from the host perspective. So we're mapping to the device at the start and mapping from the device at the end. And then we map our three arrays that all start at, at zero and are of length array size. So we have these simple ways of moving memory on demand from the device to the host and back again. This sets up the uh, device data environment as it's known so that when the target kernel itself is launched, that data is already there and resident on the device and ready to go. So what does this mean for performance? Well, in this heat map on the right hand side, I'm showing the percentage of the theoretical peak memory bandwidth. So Babelstream will output the memory bandwidth that was attained, the sustained memory bandwidth. And we can look on a, on a text sheet from the vendor and see what is the peak bandwidth that particular processor might provide. And we compute the percentage and plot that in this figure. So on the y-axis, on the left-hand side, I have lots of different processors. There's 15 different processors here, ranging from CPUs from Intel, AMD, IBM, and ARM-based processors such as the Thunder X2 from Marvell, the Amazon Graviton 2, and the Fujitsu A64FX. I have three um, HPC GPUs from NVIDIA, the P100, V100, and Ampere, the A100, along with a consumer device, the, the Turing GPU. From AMD, I have the Radeon 7 and the MI50, both GPUs from, from AMD. And finally, an Intel GPU, the Iris Pro Gen 9. This is often found in um, you know, desktop integrated graphic processors. And we're using it here as an example of an Intel GPU, given that one of the large machines in the United States, the Aurora process, um, supercomputer, is due to have Intel GPUs at Exascale. So this gives us a wide range of, of CPUs and GPUs from all the vendors and captures many of the latest processors that they've released. Now on the x-axis here, I have six different programming models, including OpenMP on, on the bottom left there. So reading up the column for OpenMP, we can see the percentage um, of uh, achievable memory bandwidth that we're measuring with OpenMP across our different processors. Now OpenMP, we have complete coverage and of all the program models that we have, it's the only model that, that at this time we were able to um, generate results on all of our processes. Things like Sickle and Cocos are also doing very well and we see near complete coverage. Uh, only one device is, is not able to, to measure. What's important though is we see that for OpenMP we get very consistent results for this triad kernel across all our processes. All the results are you know, around 70 plus percent in, in the main. There's a few results that are slightly lower and, and we attribute those primarily to immaturities in the compiler. 
For example, the, the lower result on the Radeon 7 is using the GCC compiler, which is very immature with its um, OpenMP backend targeting AMD GPUs compared to some of the other implementations of OpenMP targeting other architectures. We expect to see the compilers improve over time, especially as many of these um, compilers will be used at Exascale using OpenMP to target these different processes. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this and also some of the some extra results from the dot kernel as well as other benchmarks, then at the Supercomputer Conference this year at the uh, P3HPC workshop, we're going to be presenting a paper called Tracking Performance Portability on the Yellow Brick Road to Exascale. So if you're interested in finding out some more about this, then, then do join up for the, for the workshop track and um, you can hear my talk there. So OpenMP5 uh, was released a few years ago now, and um, there are some key features there that help with writing OpenMP codes targeting um, GPUs. Firstly, the, the experience of writing reductions is now much more improved. It's much more uh, seamless. Back in OpenMP 4.5, you had to add a map um, clause on, on the uh, parallel target kernel that moves the reduction result from the device back to the host at the end of the execution. If you miss this map clause, the reduction would happen, but you wouldn't get the result back on the host, which is not really what you'd like. So you'd add the map clause to the reduction clause, and this means you would get the result. But in OpenMP5, there's no need to add the map clause anymore. It's now automatically mapped back to the host. So you just have to write the reduction clause in OpenMP5, which is, which is a much, um, much more streamlined experience. OpenMP5 also introduces meta directives. These are, these are a kind of preprocessor step um, that, that enables you to uh, select which batches of, of OpenMP compiler directives you might like to apply to different loops. So this is a standard way you can, you can if def different fragments between the different kernels. Now, most of the um, compiler directives that, that, are, that are used to target the GPU will automatically run on the host if they can't run, or if, you com if you're not compiling with the compiler that will automatically um, support a particular device. This means that you can just write the target directives and they will automatically fall back onto the host. Now, while this is very useful in, the, in that you may only have to write one set of directives, if you want to ensure that that particular kernel is offloaded to a GPU, then OpenMP5 introduces this new environment variable, OMP target offload. You can set this to mandatory, and this means that the, the at runtime, the, um, the kernels, the target regions must be offloaded to the target device. They're not allowed to fall back to the host. Now, some, some open question that, we, um, that we're thinking about a lot in, in Bristol at the moment is, in OpenMP, you still have these two memory spaces. You have the memory space of the host and the memory space of the device, and you have to map be from between the host and the device. Now, whilst unified shared memory means that you maybe don't have to map anything at all and just rely on the um, support from the hardware, it's an open question to see what in OpenMP can help with this too, whether it's through allocators or, or, or instead of the map clause. So this is something that we're thinking about a lot at the moment. So to wrap up, it is possible to write performance portable code in OpenMP. And the, the results I showed and the, and the link to the presentation is also you know, expands on that further. The other thing over the last year we've seen is really improved support in compilers, and this is improving all the time. And there's a particular concerted effort over the last year. So we can now see good um, performance in the LLVM compiler, which is targeting NVIDIA GPUs. As part of one API, Intel have released a new C++ compiler and C compiler and Fortran compiler. And with this, they have an OpenMP runtime that will now support OpenMP GPUs. This is how we obtained our results. So we have an Intel compiler that will support an Intel GPU for, with using OpenMP. In GCC, we can also see OpenMP support for targeting AMD GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs as well. An AMD's AOMP compiler is improving all the time based on LLVM, which is adding in support for AMD GPUs. The Excel compiler from, from IBM was an initial catalyst for some of the support in the LLVM compiler used to, to target NVIDIA GPUs. And with the CCE compiler, that's been around for a long time, supporting NVIDIA GPUs as well. Do check out the OpenMP website, which shows a, a, an updated list of all the compilers that support OpenMP and exactly 
what, what support is available within those compilers. So that's pretty much it from me. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about me and, and the University of Bristol, do have a look at my website shown on the bottom left. You can also, uh, you know, start start listening to some of the extra things I've 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 um, presented about different program models, including OpenMP and Sickle. At those first two links there, and if you're interested in learning OpenMP for the first time, do check out my tutorial. It's aimed at um, computational scientists writing Fortran. So how can you write OpenMP code for Fortran? And it pretty much covers most of the OpenMP 4.5 specification. If you're interested in learning um, ta how to target GPUs with OpenMP, then with my colleague Simon McIntosh Smith, we're going to be presenting our tutorial at Supercomputing uh, this year. Um, and the information is on the bottom of that slide. For any more information about OpenMP, do have a look at their website. Thank you very much.